Hello and welcome to Swiftly Spoken, a fan-made Taylor Swift podcast in which we break down her lyrics, deep dive into full album retrospectives and theorise about what may be coming next. As always, we are your hosts Cameron and Lisa and in this episode we're going to be reacting, recapping and discussing Speak Now, Taylor's version. After having teased Speak Now, Taylor's version ever since the release of Midnight's with the Bejeweled music video, during the Friday, May the 5th concert in Nashville, Taylor officially announced Speak Now, Taylor's version. In this episode, we'll be going over over our reactions, theories, and discussing everything we know. So, like you said, this last weekend, Taylor finally announced Speak Now, Taylor's version, and she did it in such a creative and fun way. How did you feel about the reaction? Did you watch it live? Did you watch it afterwards? What are your thoughts? No, unfortunately, um, yeah, unfortunately, unlike all the other reactions, other kind of releases like Midnight's, where I kind of watched it live, and when she announced it um, at MTV Music Awards, unfortunately, I was fast asleep, so I just didn't expect it. Um, and I woke up in the morning and was like, "What on earth?" Um, so yeah, it was a really exciting surprise, and also just such a cool way to do it for her to do it with the fans. And the success of the Taylor's versions have been because of the fans. So it was such a lovely way to do that, and in Nashville, which is such a like just a home for Taylor and her music and just has so many, she has so many kind of memories of. So I thought it was the perfect way to do it. And I just couldn't imagine what it must have been like being there um, and just the excitement. Like I am so unbelievably jealous of everyone there. Like I can't imagine how cool that must have been. How do you feel about it? This last weekend in Nashville has been absolutely crazy. Like those three dates, it must have been just so... We've had a lot of content. Yeah, yeah, a unique experience to have been there and to live through it in person. Phoebe Bridges coming out to sing Nothing New, getting this crazy announcement, the rain show and everything that that entailed as well and then everything else that's going on. But yeah, honestly, I did not expect it. We had recorded an episode going on about when we thought this was going to happen. And in that scrapped episode at this point, we did say that it we felt that it was going to be very, very soon. I did have my eye on next weekend, so the 13th, her reclaiming it in this very specific place where we all know, you know, who's, who's based in Nashville, right? Exactly. So, no, it was such a magical moment. I absolutely loved it. I loved how just her saying, instead of speaking about it, and like the bridge lighting up in purple and everyone knew like at that moment oh yeah it was just such a magical moment where all swifties knew what was going on and then obviously the big billboard or you know up on the screens and mm. we have to go into that next i guess which is the cover yes the cover the cover which is gorgeous i couldn't imagine when i saw it i was like that is just so perfect and just it captures the essence of the original album, but in such a sophisticated, elegant, mm -hmm. mature way. And I think that I probably have said this before, but I just, especially with Fearless and Red, I feel like the Taylor's versions are so perfectly capturing the essence of the original, but just making them more sophisticated, more grown, and just more, they just look like the person on those covers has more life experience. And that's because she does from the person that did, but mm -hmm. they just look just so much more aware of themselves and just look very clear of what they're the message they're trying to convey mm. and they just encapsulate the era the cover i just think it's perfect the dress everything curly hair we couldn't have asked for anything better how are you feeling about it i definitely agree it's something that we were a bit worried about in general we're always worried about these because you get so used to seeing the original covers that you're so used to seeing that piece of artwork and it is an iconic piece of artwork don't get me wrong that oh, will yeah. never change but just like you said yeah these re-editions for Fearless and Red, I felt the same. And for this one especially, it's just such a glamorous photo shoot. Yes. It looks like I can't wait to see more, by the way, of that. But it's just absolutely, she knocked out of the park. The purple dress, which, oh, you know, Swifties had set the bar oh. high in their edits. But she really came and she provided for us. Oh, like, like you said, it's very so much more sophisticated grown up the hair just blowing back casually but at the same time you know that look of knowing that she's about you know she's about to speak now is exactly what she's about yeah. to do no it she really captured like you said she captured the message of this album but put it out there mm. with that much experience and time and perspective between the original release and now, which is another really poetic thing that has come about with these Taylor's versions. We see them through a different light and so does she. And she's able to use mm. that perspective and time to inform 
these re-releases, which is really, really interesting. Yeah, no, I, I think it couldn't be more perfect. And just cap the dress is gorgeous. It kind of captures the flowiness and elegance of the original, which ironically isn't actually purple. No. Um, and obviously is like a paint splatter. But I think that the fact that it's a real dress, I don't know, I, I do think that it just captures the original, but just is perfect. Matches um, the other Taylor's versions. And I just, like you said, I can't wait to see what more of the photo shoot will be. And what the kind of design of the album will be, the CD, what the kind of, just the CD will look like, the back cover, the inside, the photo shoot, just so many fun things. And just the general merch as well is really exciting. So cover is definitely a big tick and probably one of my favourites of her entire discography so far, like generally. Yeah, honestly, I have to agree. This one and Red Taylor's version, both of them, obviously Fearless is also really, really captures the essence of Fearless as well. But Mm. these two are just, there's just, oh, but so the imagery of them is so elegant. I can't put it any other yeah. way, really, and so artistic that it really, really hits the nail on the head. But an interesting thing to note that you were just speaking about wanting to see the insides and the disc and the photo shoot. Mm. How do you think she's going to do it? Because you're the expert on this and on merch um, and packaging. So I know for Red yeah. and Fearless, there was different things going on with the backs of them, right? Yes. So yeah, the, the Fearless, like, because as we said before, Phyllis Taylor's version was a slight tentative release, I believe, and just the way that it was all kind of done. So you had obviously the Phyllis Taylor version photo shoot cover, and then the back was a photo from the photo shoot, and inside the CD was the photo shoot. The OG Phyllis CD was the like front cover photo shoot, and the back was the hand heart, but that was obviously a new kind of updated version. And then the booklet was full of like tour photos, so I'm intrigued to see if that will cut co- like carry over and speak now as well because then for red it similarly they obviously had the new cover as the cover but the back had tour photos from the red tour and the inside had the cover on one cd and then photos from the tour on the like deluxe vault cd Um, and then inside was full of tour photos but then the taylor's version section and songs was full of the red taylor's version photo shoot Mm. so i'm going to be intrigued to see if that will be carry over and speak now or whether it would be all tour or all photo shoot um so yeah i'm just quite excited i know that's such a niche random thing to be like oh i know what that's going to be about but as someone that obviously collects cds and things like that it's just fun i just kind of love those releases but yeah really excited to see some more and hopefully as we kind of lead up to the release we'll get a couple more photos here and there oh yeah definitely and that vinyl we must say that and even the cassette <gasps> the vinyl is gorgeous the yes color the, of even it. yeah i never ordered a vinyl so quick in my life I was like I have to have this <laughs> what we know as of now about the CD itself and about what it will contain is not much we know that it is out on July the 7th which is not long to go less than two months at this point we know that it includes a total of 22 songs which makes it the shortest Taylor's version and we know that out of those 22 songs six will be vault tracks now that means that if we break it down we have the 14 standard speak now tracks And then, obviously, we have the six from the Vault confirmed tracks. That leaves us with two slots for the two deluxe songs, which basically gives us the confirmation, sadly, that If This Was A Movie is not going to be on Speak Now, Taylor's version. If you want to hear more about our opinions on that subject, then you can also check out our previous episode in which we talk about Taylor's recent leaks and releases and where we go in depth as to why we think if this was a movie will not be included on Speak Now Taylor's version, the reasoning behind it, and how it has somehow found its home on Fearless. Though it is quite sad. I find it sad. I do. Mm. It's a shame that it's been orphaned a little bit. Um, I'm glad that it wasn't just totally abandoned and forgotten about and just erased and just pretended like it never existed. I'm glad that's not the case, but I do think it's sad. I understand the reasoning. Initially, I was Mm. very, like, stubborn about it. I was like, no, 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 I'm not accepting it. I'm not accepting it. But now I'm like, I can accept it, but I'm still a bit sad because it would have been nice for it to stay on its original home um, and not kind of be upended and shoved onto Fearless of, like, you know, the back of Fearless. Like, yeah, it's on there. It's always been on there. Um, But oh, well. It is, it is a shame, but yeah, at least we've got ours and Superman. That's one thing I'm glad about. Yeah, we it would those seem two. that way, yeah. 
And um, I think it, in the end, it's something that we mentioned, but each of these Taylor's version releases have really played on major factors of each album. Fearless played around with nostalgia, and Love Story being the the single of the Fearless Taylor's version album, as well as the original. But, you know, it, the connection between her and the fans and how this was a project that was very much for herself, but also very much for us as long as we wanted it. And we came out and we was like, yeah, we want we want this as much as you do. Red obviously was based around the idea of finally getting the full story of Red, including obviously yeah. the crown jewel that is all too well, mm -hmm, all too well, ten minute version. And now with Speak Now, she's definitely playing on the idea of you know this is this the self written album, like it's the meme that we've always had, but she wants that to be completely true from start to finish. It would seem. So the last thing that we can get into really is just to speak quickly about the vault tracks. Now, we know from the era of around 11 songs, but we don't really know much about them. We've heard only two of them and one very, very recently. The other, the others, basically we know the names, but nothing more than that. So just to mention the two that we do know of and have heard are Drama Queen, which actually that's a bit controversial because as we discussed in our last episode, Drama Queen has recently leaked and one of you guys, one of our listeners, kindly commented and we it led us to a deep dive on Drama Queen and it eventually led us to discover that this song may not really have been intended in the first place for Speak Now at all. It more may have been intended for the Fearless Platinum Edition, but it was left off of there, it was left off of the Fearless Vault. With it leaking recently and having a co-writer, I don't see it making its way onto Speak Now Taylor's version. No, no not at all. I think message-wise as we mentioned in the last episode and yeah all those factors I don't think it's going to be featured unfortunately and potentially why it was leaked. Mm. But what about the other one that we do know of? What about Let's Go also known as Battle within the fandom? How are you feeling about that one? Is it something that you would like to hear within these six songs? I wouldn't mind it and I'd be quite happy to hear it and I would like to you know see what the difference is with the Taylor's version because the version that we have is very much a demo and you can really hear that in its production. So I quite like to see a full production, modern vocals and things like that. And then also what's quite good is these kind of original demos are quite a good anchor point to see how much is, be is being changed with the vault and whether, you know, they are sticking to their original form or whether they have kind of taken on a new life, like some of the Fearless songs, whereas it seems like the majority of the Red Taylor's version are very, very close to their original form. Um, but I wouldn't be mad because we're only going to get six. And as you mentioned, there's potentially 11 from this era that we've heard of. So it would be quite nice for the six to be totally new ones. And I definitely wouldn't be mad if they were. I wouldn't be mad, but I wouldn't be sad. You know, yeah. I, I'm not, I like Battle. I think it's a really good song, but I, I would quite like to see some of the others appear as well. Yeah, I think you made a good point there that it could be really interesting to compare and contrast. But at the same time... I agree with you. I'd rather kind of see completely new ones, even though her mm. mature vocals now and the change up could really make it an iconic song. Uh, I can go either way as well. I'm not sure. But let's go through the list of these names. We know nothing about these songs. Some of them are very much rumor based. Others seem to be names that have popped up during that time and have carried over until now. All of them are rumoured to be self-written, so perhaps they would fit. This doesn't mean that any of them may appear at the end. We might get to it and she pulls out six songs that no one knew anything of, but are from that era, which would be just as interesting for other reasons. But anyway, these are the ones that we know of. These are the names to bear in mind and look back on when we do eventually get the vault tracks revealed. We have His Lies, Timeless, Bother Me, Castle's Crumbling, I Can See You, Someone Just Told Me, Wonderful Things, Foolish One, and finally, If Kisses Were Wishes. Out of all of these names, essentially that's all it is, a list of names. How are you feeling? Are there any that really scream out to you? I think I think it's maybe things that bother me, it's kind of giving me better than revenge vibes. Castle's Crumbling, I quite like the idea of that. Foolish One makes me feel... I don't know, it makes you feel like Lucky One kind of vibes of like, oh, maybe I'm the, you know, maybe I didn't mean this. Or it could be, again, it could be a better than revenge kind of feel. Mm. So I'm not too sure. I think I've always really struggled to get much of a feel from track lists. I think especially with the like Midnight's one, some of those track lists when we were being uh, kind of 
tease them i was like some of these names i was like what on earth like vigilante shit i was just like this is really weird so i've always found that it's really hard to kind of judge what the song's going to be and i'm really rubbish with that but there's some really interesting ones in there and potentially we could even get them and it'd be a bit of a bye bye baby situation where it might actually be one of these songs but maybe it's not actually called that yeah um so yeah, I'm intrigued to see what, what what we get. And but out of there, yeah, I think the ones that are kind of calling out to me is like "Bother Me," "Castles Crumbling," "Foolish One," and potentially if "Kisses Were Wishes," I quite like kind of mm. the way that that's kind of phrased. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the one that most intrigues me is definitely "Castles Crumbling" because many of them they don't really they don't say much. They can go either way. Is it "Am I the Foolish One?" Are you the Foolish One? Who's the you know? What did someone just tell me? But with Castles Crumbling, we do have like a negative connotation and it does fit the aesthetic of, you know, a bit of fairy tale. It That period yeah. of her life was coming to an end at this point. And I, I, I don't know, I want to hear it. I'd like to know what she has to say. It's a uh, imagery that carries throughout Speak Now and the era itself, which would be interesting to see, you know, spun in a more negative way way perhaps that one is the one yeah. intriguing to me and yeah with if kisses were wishes because most of these are just names that we've got through different you know publishing and websites but if kisses were wishes this was one that taylor mentioned to a fan right yeah i believe yeah it was at the tea party i think a fan asked her like what kind of song she was writing and taylor said this one supposedly but as we're quite aware sometimes from kind of meeting greets and taylor said it herself especially when we spoke to um, Medeha when she kind of gave us all the insights on the Love and Secret session and Taylor literally told the Secret session as like do not quote me people are quoting me and that's not what I've said like you know mm. you know don't like say this a direct quote from me so you never really know how true these things are and obviously they do start to become like whispers of like it seems like someone says one thing and then it kind of gets misconstrued and the next person says another that's totally different from what it originally was and this just happens in general with just misinformation throughout the fandom sometimes so um we never really know but it's still quite exciting and it would be really cool if that did come to kind of fruition and you know that fan that did ask that question could then actually eventually get to hear that song that would be so, so cool. yeah that would that, that would be, quite be. If, exciting. It, if it's true honestly now that you've said that about that fan that would be like so amazing imagine being that fan and after all these years yeah. finally getting that one little mention song. It. again like we mentioned we're just glossing over these quickly but if you want any more details about what may appear on speak now taylor's version vault our opinions as to what is most likely a bit more in detail of what we do know and our opinions also about who may be appearing as the features or who we would like to appear in a dream world as the features then please go check out our episode based entirely around that finally now you'll be hearing us talk about some interesting re-recording information the 2024 calendar and a possible speak now taylor's version or speak now taylor's version related music video we recorded this section before the speak now taylor's version announcement but it still makes sense to the general conversation and the speak now hype one thing though just to bear in mind is that there's been lots of karma music video rumors recently so this mu potential music video could also be for that or related to speak now somehow and used to perhaps tease speak now content just like bejeweled did a couple of weekends ago we got some photos from a music video set where supposedly taylor is recording something we don't know yet there's a lot of interesting details that we've kind of I mean, again, we discussed this in last episode where leaked things, it's always difficult to discuss. Obviously, on one side, Taylor wouldn't want us to see these things, but on the other side, it creates so much hype around it that in a way, is it detrimental? I don't know. How do you feel about seeing these photos before the MV is dropped? Yeah, I do think it's really interesting, these kind of things. And I think it's a bit similar with the Project Acorn thing that happened during Red, where there was so much hype about what that was, what, 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 what was that, what was that. And I don't know if we, to this day, even really know what that was. And also then flashing back to things, say, in the Reputation era when Taylor was recording Endgame in London, and how much of that we saw pre-music video, it, and also then all the stuff of her on the boat, if you remember, there was a kind of paparazzi shot, and then there was all rumours that Katy Perry was yep. in the music video. Oh, God. I think it does just add to the hype, because... I don't think it ever, I don't think it ruined the video at all. It just made you excited. You said, oh, I want to see what this is about and all this is exciting. And I think what we have seen so far of the music video definitely doesn't ruin it. I do think it just adds to the hype of it. Right. Um, but obviously it's not great because it would be nicer for it to be a total surprise. But I don't think it's it's difficult. It's one of those things that adds to hype but also does 
slightly ruin it. I think it's a bit like what's going on with Wicked at the moment, where we're seeing so much of like leaked footage or from set and stuff like that that it's like, oh, that's slightly ruining the surprise of seeing stuff. But, but also at the same it's time, the yeah, at the same time, I'm not a person that maybe would have wanted to check that out. But now that I've seen mm. some of the clips from it, I'm like, actually, no, this is interesting. So yeah it's difficult it is it, difficult it, it serves both things it's 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 almost you know like the saying good press no press is bad press mm. it's one of those things where it's almost like it's not great you don't really want it to be leaked but it, at the end of the day it's only creating more hype and potentially making more people aware of something that they weren't if they weren't an avid fan and playing close attention and now aware of whereas mm. they might not have been before so yeah it's, it's complicated it definitely is complicated but i do think those photos reveal quite a lot they're very interesting so we are going to get into them a little bit now if you don't want any spoilers you can skip through this part that's no problems and also before we do get into it we have to take everything that we think we can see and what people have said with such a massive grain of salt because as you just said perfect example is endgame they were like uh taylor swift and katie perry are on a boat together no she really was not so we're going to discuss some things, rumours. Firstly, what she's wearing. So we have like this one yes. grainy picture, which I think everyone on the internet has seen at this point. And it does look like she is wearing the Speak Now tall clothes, you know, the Sparks Fly iconic golden yes. dress and the black boots. It does look like she is wearing that. She's which... got like curly hair right. and everything. So, so yeah, it is. 100% it's that outfit I don't want to believe anything else I, just I know want I, I, I want it to be so bad because oh the nostalgia she's just so yes. good at, at doing these things where she captures just the right amount of nostalgia but recreates it in a perfect way it also yeah. this is so exciting to me and something that I can't I really want it to be true although again you can't really tell because the image is so grainy and in a way I don't want to know but it looks like she has mm. a 13 on her hand which is just it so... does Oh, it does, it does. And I hope as well that she'll have a lyric written down her arm. That oh would be God, the cherry, cherry on top. On top. Yes. Yeah, that would be like the ultimate thing. And also what, from this photo as well, which just screams Speak Now, is the golden frame. Because mm-hmm. that golden frame was such mm-hmm. a motif in the Speak Now original album booklet, merchandise, uh, the tour, and also then kind of the tour kind of packaging in the CD, DVD. And also, ironically... Taylor's original plan for the Speak Now World Tour was to actually come down. The frame, frame. you're right. Oh so my god, you're right. The, the Lover golden books frame. told us about that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so iconic. it's like the golden frame is such like a thing just associated with the aesthetic of Speak Now. Like even when you think of like Wonderstruck, the, it had like the little gold bits hanging around the kind of mm-hmm. like the cap and stuff. You know what I mean? So I think that, yeah, that outfit does scream Speak Now. But I think that there's a bit of confusion at the moment going on with maybe what the music video is for because right. of the fact that it looks like she's robbing something. Mm. And I think that lots of people are then, because of obviously Vigilante shit's gone a bit viral because of the incredible Eros tour performance, lots of people are suggesting that the music video might be for that. But from this kind of outfit, I just think I just think it's Speak Now. Like I, I, I don't think it's Vigilante shit at all. It would be a very strange crossover i know that we've just come off the bat of explaining bejeweled and going into all of the easter eggs that are included in the bejeweled video but at no point does she quite clearly you know dress up in an old clothing of hers i guess then people could argue yeah but what about reputation or what about this i know it is difficult it's difficult to broach but i do think that it is a heist it looks like a heist but i don't think it's vigilante shit because vigilante shit it may be in that world of crime and committing and you know all of this but i i really do think this is something this is something different this is something very much speak now i same here and i think also the original narrative before we got the photos was that it was a batman inspired video and i think that that's also maybe what added to the idea of it being about the jewel vigilante speak now yeah yeah sorry yeah being about vigilante shit rather than speak now but Mm. i think also what's interesting to mention is that it's rumored that joey king and taylor lautner are also in the music video which if those two are that just couldn't be more it's, sweet now. Then it's clear, yeah. <laughs> it's it's very yeah. clearly they are protagonists in the world of the yeah. Taylor Swift cinematic universe of Speak Now. Yes, uh, yeah, which would so be really cool. Um, it would be I absolutely think that would be really amazing cool to kind of get those yeah. two 
Involved. Joey King obviously also, was in the original Mean video. Taylor Lautner obviously is someone who Taylor has written songs about and has now become, it would seem, friends with, which is an amazing, yeah. amazing thing to see over the years because it just gives it such a nice nostalgic touch of like uh, yeah, Back to definitely. December having a nice ending to it, which I love. I always yeah. love to see it. Yeah, definitely. And also, th- so the music video was filmed in Liverpool, I believe at like 3 a.m. or something crazy. In the middle of the night, yeah. Um, and uh, Taylor Lautner, I believe, was at the Comic Con in Liverpool. Mm-hmm, so was. yeah, he was definitely in Liverpool at that point. So I think that, and there are two other people: one that looks like a man, and one that looks like a woman. So hopefully, J- Joey King and Taylor Lautner are the other two kind of people in front of Taylor in the in that kind of image that oh, we've got. Oh, it would be iconic. It would be it so really cool. And, and I think also the theme of the music video looks like it's about stealing back stuff that she owns you know what i mean like by re-recording mm-hmm. gaining the rights back to her stuff and taking it off people that don't necessarily deserve it and one of those things is because of some other photos that we've seen from inside at the building but it looks like there's some tour props so the speak now love story balcony that was included in the speak now world tour the Taylor sings that love story on which also was slightly included in the bejeweled video as well so i don't think this is the first time we've seen it take a reoccurrence and also then we've seen the back to december piano as well the white piano also in some photos i'm not really sure th- those photos don't really look like much of a set though if you know what i mean it's just got like some random mannequins and looks yeah. kind of like just randomly placed so again i'm not too sure but we can't be sure take this all with a pinch of salt but yeah. In those photos, they could be when they were still being set up. Maybe then yeah. it was set up. The mannequins could have had iconic Speak Now outfits, outfits on them. That yeah. would be amazing. Like, there's so many things that if she is, like, doing a heist kind of thing and she's breaking into the museum and, you know, pulling back her past and, and getting it, oh, so iconic. Yeah, I, I don't know. Either Joey King and Taylor Lautner being her partners in crime or her breaking them out of that, both out, would be maybe, yeah. amazing in my opinion. <laughs> I just love it, but I think what kind of speak now song would that go with? You know, what I'm I, mean? I don't know because Do you think it'd be some evolved? people were like enchanted, and I was like, no, I don't know not, about that. I don't want enchanted to have a heist video. No, way. <laughs> enchanted for me, I want you know, like the Wonderstruck perfume advert. Yeah. That's yeah. how I see it. It's giving that. Like well, it's giving the, yeah. the era's tool performance. That's what, you know, like, yes, she's captures yeah. the essence perfectly it, there. So I don't exactly. know. I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to give two uh, opinions. I, I am thinking two different things, and you guys can let me know how wrong I am or not. And you can tell me your opinion, Cameron. But I'm thinking either a Vault song, which is going to fit somehow, yeah. or you know what? Better than Revenge. <laughs> oh, imagine. <laughs> She's going to go magic. in there and she's like, there's nothing I do better than robbing some of my old, out, uh, old yeah, artwork exactly. back. <laughs> yeah, it, it is giving better than Revenge or a, another vault track. I think it'll be a vault track. I think so far, obviously we've only, mm-hmm. Fearless didn't really have any music videos as such, but from Red's patterning, obviously yeah. the only song that got a music video was a vault track. Obviously, All Too I Got a Short Film. Again, mm. that is also a vault track. It's a vault track. version. Mm. So, yeah, vault tracks at the moment, see, because really, see, there's no point making a music video for something that's already got one. Like, we're never, ever adding back together exactly. has a music video. Exactly. It's never going to live up to that original because that original's, you know, been out for so long and is iconic for what it was. Mm, and definitely. R- even though Taylor is gaining ownership back to her music, she's not rewriting the narrative, its yeah. history. Yeah. yeah. I love so, that. You know, you know what I mean? She's yeah. not going back and, like, like, you know, with like 22. So she's like wearing that outfit at the era. So, you know what I mean? Rather than totally, ch- obviously she's mimicked it and made, you know what I mean? Changed stuff like a lot going on, which is obviously different, but she's not like going back and like redoing the music video and changing this up and making, because it, it was what it was for a moment. And now mm-hmm. it's being kind of, you know, reclaimed rather exactly. than rewritten. Yeah. Potentially it could be, if this was a movie, imagine if this was a movie does get a life from speak now, it gets a little music video. Just that would a, be, be it, I just released it before just for, for giggles. Yeah. Thought I initially thought I think we mentioned we might mention it on an episode or off mic that we kind of thought maybe towards the end of the year get Eras Tour out of the way potentially do it then but I think why not do it during the Eras Tour like what a better way to promote an album than right really you know what I mean like she's at the peak of her career like why why not and let's face it when... the more that she performs these songs the more that they're going to be streamed like exactly realistically exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. And also, which is interesting to mention, is that obviously we got that video the other day from the dancers in rehearsal, 
where we heard Enchanted Taylor's version. Right. So we yeah. definitely know that it's that a song bit is recorded. It's contentious though, because I have read some people saying that for obviously for concerts, artists do have yes, like a backing kind of track, record. so they have to yeah. record some things. But then again, it was like so crystal clear and sounded mm. amazing. So, and because mm, I've seen lots of stuff as well about people saying that for like don't blame me and stuff what sounds like the backing tracks doesn't sound like the original yeah it does sound like re-recorded and like right. you said artists do record stuff backing tracks and yeah stuff for with their most tours. recent vocals yeah exactly if you can do that why not you know you're if, there. Yeah. it's like yeah, <laughs> right, yeah while you're at it why not just do the whole thing yeah and so i and it wouldn't surprise me and yeah like you said it potentially is just the backing track but a lot of the time the when people time. do perform the backing track is often just the track anyway exactly you know exactly I mean? like, so yeah it, it, yeah that's contentious like you said but that is still it's Another still like there's still a recording somewhere mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of enchanted with a more modern vocal it's on all it. coming together um, it's all coming together yes, and honestly definitely. i've never been more hyped about speak now in my entire life like i've always loved Me speak too. now as an album but for a long oh, yeah. time with so many newer albums and so much spotlight being put on to red i really thought i don't know how she's going to pull this off with, yeah, exactly. With Speak Now. And it's something we discussed as well, like Fearless has the nostalgia mm. pull, Red has the the pull of All Too Well when just being an iconic album on its own. 1989 album, yeah. is... Ugh, 1989. Iconic. So, yeah. and we discussed... And then like, we've always been a bit concerned with, like, Debut mm, and Speak Now exactly. of how to kind of market those up against these big, big Titans. hit albums. Which, honestly, yeah. this is no shade to Debut or Speak Now because they are amazing albums oh, on their own. Like They're, like, two of my faves. Exactly. So... But they are kind of smaller, if you will, within the fandom, and you you can tell that by you know how they chart sometimes. The Eras tour, and the, for example. Yeah. Unfortunately, yes, yeah. But I do think that she's gearing up. We know that Taylor's a mastermind, like no pun intended. Mm. She just <laughs> she knows how to market things. She does. So I think that another thing that she's done well is put the space between the last taylor's version and the next taylor's version through midnight's and honestly in a way midnight's kind of introduced or reintroduced speak now yes it, it did a little bit it did like through especially would have could have would have should have could have which is just so speak now coded it's just like yeah going for it but no i do think that she's done it in a way that she's geared me up at least i am so hyped for oh speak definitely now, taylor's oh version. me too 100%. Like, I'm ready for it. Yeah, I'm in my purple era. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 100%. No, I'm really excited. And also, if this was a movie, again, was such a, was so perfect and such a like copy paste so well from the original. Done. Like, mm -hmm. literally, it was so just perfect. There if that's nothing, any indication no to how Speak yeah. Now is going to be, we are in for an amazing a album. treat. Yeah. yeah. We're Definitely. in for Definitely. something, you know, akin to Fearless, where it was just improved yeah. even like dare yeah, i say exactly yeah. yeah definitely oh no yeah 100 percent. and yeah if this is a movie just for me um obviously it's i do find it slightly sad that we do lose the kind of innocent like slightly younger vocals but right. part of me does love actually the maturity in taylor's voice i and know it's like just the way she sings is just be like better yeah, and just more confident like the hd and more version it makes you like yeah exactly feel like you're listening to it on like really good quality you know it just yeah, feels like yeah, the other exactly. one was like a vhs and this is like streaming yeah. in hd 4k quality yeah, like, you know yeah exactly yeah yeah no i I know what you mean. So yeah, it, it there is an element of sadness, but also when mm. they're enhanced and made better, you're like, nah, cool. From what we heard from If This Was a Movie, If the Rest of Speak Now is as perfect uh, in regards to its original, to its Taylor's version as that, then yeah, we're definitely, definitely in for a treat. But the last thing that we can speak about as well, which has just happened like today, so we've been speaking about it, is that the official Taylor Swift calendars have now been put up. I think they were, it was on Amazon. And the 2024 yeah. calendar includes Speak Now World Tour images for the whole year. Yes, yeah, the entirety, yes, which is interesting. And I think that is kind of, the calendars are obviously chronologically you know, throughout her career, I've always kind of tracked photo shoots, tours. It's been quite kind of continuous. So that's definitely a really good sign that that's next because the last ones that we've had have obviously been Evermore, the Fearless and Red Taylor's version ones. Um, but the, obviously it's, people are slightly surprised why Midnight's isn't the cover and why we've kind of jumped through to speak now, but just because of the way the calendars are made and obviously they have to make them years in advance because to get authorised and go into 
print, obviously, the Midnight's photo shoot wouldn't have been out by the time that they would have had to release all that. So obviously, there was they clearly knew, even back then, that Speak Now would be next. So that was clearly known for a while. Very interesting. Um, so it would have been nearly a year in advance, um, if not, you know, nine, ten months in advance to, you know what I mean, the year that it has to be in then yeah so it's interesting that that is next definitely a really good sign though that is a really good sign and i think yeah if you do want to hear all of our thoughts regarding Mm -hmm. speak now and its vault then do check out our speak now vault episode where we go into depth into kind of everything that we know might possibly get some unreleased leaked tracks or titles of tracks that we know of and our hopes and wishes for vault collaborations who we want to be on the vault Mm -hmm. um, and also what we think is realistic in regards to the vault but yeah so check out that episode if you want to kind of hear more we've now come to the end of this episode if you did enjoy then make sure to like over on youtube and also let us know in the comments how excited you are for speak now what your theories are we want to hear all your thoughts Um, also if you're listening over on apple podcast or spotify make sure to rate us and also just to make sure that you're up to date on when episodes are coming out um, follow us over on instagram at swiftly spoken podcast